far as the Navy is concerned, they're public. They spout um, experimental. They say it's all experimental and nothing is being done that could harm the public. And we know this is not a fact, but um, the Navy still, it's their story and they're, and they're sticking to it. I also mentioned early on that the program was expensive. It is vastly expensive. It was actually referred to by Arthur C. Clarke in a book called The Fountains of Paradise, which came out uh, 20 years ago or so. It's an excellent book if you like sci-fi. And Clark, he's well known for being able to um, interpret the future in, in, in positive ways. He was actually the developer of the satellite dish, you know, among other things. So he wasn't just a sci-fi writer, and he just passed just recently. And, and rest in peace, Arthur. We love you. So anyway, he he mentioned that the rebuilding of the atmosphere was going to have to happen, and that it was going to be a massively expensive undertaking. So that tells you right there, if you follow the money, who's behind it? It's the money. It's the people that control the money. And that just fills my head with so many avenues to go off on that I'm going to get confused here. Because there's just, um, they've been after, you know, the money here. The, f the first Democratic president in the United States, most people wouldn't believe this or don't know it, was Andrew Jackson. He was the first Democrat for the people. And he kicked the internationalists out of here who had, under Hamilton's policies, already put our, our government in debt to the tune of $260 million plus by 1820. And that was like in the first 40 or 50 years of our country. So Jackson came in, he kicked them out. In 1828, he left office, and our debt was 65 grand. Well, they didn't like that at all, and they came back, and it took them less than two or two and a half decades to machinate the Civil War, which they said was about slavery, excuse me, but was actually about states' rights and really was about uh, conglomerating the power of the federal government. And those same people that machinated the most horrible war in our history, uh, the only one really, but the, a very horrible war, and they made buku bucks too. They came back in, and by 1913, they were able to begin the Federal Reserve. And once the Federal Reserve gained control of our currency, then came the income tax, which was to be rescinded after uh, World War I because it was supposedly a, a wartime emergency uh, act, but it never was, was rescinded, just like none of the emergency war power acts are never rescinded. And that's how they began eating away at the Constitution. First, the currency fell. Then the next was the judiciary. Then, when that was all gone, it was written on paper so that people like Lord Thompson owned the rights to the copyrights of our written laws um, and other groups overseas, the European royalty. Then they were able to start whittling away at the freedom of the people. And so these people have been busy for well over a century um, taking America from within, and this is the cleanup operation. And soon it appears that just a whole lot of the problem is just going to go away because people are going to just, I do believe that a lot of it is depopulation happening well, so slowly that people can't, cannot go on it, you know. I know. Well, depopulation uh, is a lot with the New World Order. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. Those, I'm saying all this because the people, the money people, the, the people behind the currencies, you know, now they're trying to make the Amero, and that's going to tie in with the Euro, mm -hmm. and they're going to do away. And so they're trying to make one world currency, and it's not based on precious metals, and it's not based on, it's based on what they say it's based on. It's based on the confidence that the people have in it. And the people have begun to lose confidence in that way of doing things, at least here in America. So next comes the programming, the, the druggings. Because even though these are quantum energy experiments and environmental modification experiments and could be very beneficial if they weren't being run by madmen, the overall bottom line is how is it affecting the man on the street, you know, the person in the shop, uh, the lady riding the horse, or the guy out in the cow pasture, you know, how, how are they being affected by all this? And they're having a hard time thinking. They're having a, a real hard time getting by, and what they can't think about, um, what the, the only thing that they, when, the way they can think is, how am I going to get enough money to pay my bills this month, you know? 
And so it is definitely in a covert attack that's now just starting to show its form because it's very close to culmination. And um, only a few people are awake enough to even be able to see all this. Um, you mentioned that you're taking uh, measures to protect yourself, and that's what I suggest everyone does. You know, get inside a grounded metal enclosure, even if you have to put up metal siding and metal roofing. That's happening a lot out here in the West because a lot of people are waking up out here to what's been going on. It's kind of hard to miss. And um, the people that I wanted to also say, the people that are behind it are also behind the tyranny, the dictatorship, and as I mentioned before, um, to you, the, the, none of that can take place without secrecy. And the police state, the much vaunted term, the police state. And I don't live in a city, but I see plenty of cops, and I'm sure that people in the city see a lot more than I do. And it is the number one industry in America today, and the prison guards union is the most powerful union in America. So that should tell everyone there something. And a lot of the people that are behind the chemtrailing are the people that are behind the taxing. And they are the ones who are controlling the currency. And they control the military and the law enforcement. And law enforcement, to all the listeners out there, I want you to stop and think about what does law enforcement do and what have they done for you lately. And what law enforcement basically is, is the New World Order's tax enforcement. And it's just going to get a lot worse. Now, I was on YouTube a couple weeks ago uh, trying to see some videos. I have a real hard time because of my connection. I actually passed it on and somebody wrote me a report on it. But there's 10 cities in California now, and they're starting to pop up everywhere because people are being displaced out of their homes, just like in the last depression. In the last depression, like John Steinbeck wrote about, I believe, in The Grapes of Wrath, um, people were actually able to band together and, and find food because of uh, the ability of the earth to grow food. A lot of this chemtrailing is environmental modification. Barium oxide, one of the main constituents of the particulates being sprayed, is a drought maker. It's a desiccant. They've been spraying it hard and heavy for 8 to 10 years. So they're taking control of food and water. So now when they pull a depression, which it is a totally controlled event, because people have gained so much confidence in the currency, they think nothing will ever happen, and then they forget to look around themselves and realize that they, they don't know history, they don't know that this has occurred before. So this time, it's going to be impossible for the people to feed themselves, and what we're going to see is a, a reenactment of what happened in Africa in the last 20 years. And the pictures and the reports that I know about from Africa, where the chemtrailing started in the very beginning, 20 years ago, there was no one to watch out for it. It was mass depopulation. It was used in conjunction with biotech. Then the starvation started, and within 30 days, like 70% of the people were dead. And that's how they do it. It's cheap. It's fast. And the people are so weakened by the time the starvation sets and they can't act. So I've been spouting this line for quite some time. I've been writing a lot. My book, Devil Vision, actually it's called Devil Vision, the World's New Wireless Grid. And um, it, it highlights a lot of this and it's all the facts are backed up. You know, as many of the, the publishers that I have to submit this to, they won't accept anything that's not backed up twice or thrice at least. So, you know, this is not just some, some madman's dream, you know. And yes, I've been stalked and I've been mobbed and I've been poisoned and harassed and um, tested and experimented on and everything, but uh, after a certain point, I, I didn't let it get to me anymore. It just, it just enraged me more and more and more. So that's all I am. I'm a receptacle of rage. If my rage ever vents, I don't know what's going to happen. I might just be like a balloon that just loses its air and goes, <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's what I think they're hoping is you will get uh, enraged. You know, they want you angry. They want you upset. They want you gone. I mean, mm -hmm. finally gone. And they're hoping you'll get into some trouble that might end your life or you might get so mad you'll hurt somebody and be put into jail or you'll 
be thrown, you know, into an institution, or you'll kill yourself. That's what might, you know, if they can't kill you through these chemtrails, you know, they're going to find a way, uh, another way to get rid of you, you know, as an organized stalking victim. Well, you're right. And 